Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, I know it's been quite a while since I've done a statue unboxing here on my channel. However, I think I had to make an exception for this one because I'm really excited to check this out, see what it's like, and especially because it's for an amazing statue for one of the best platforming games ever made, and that is Gaming Heads uh, Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy statue. So it's not a first four figure statue. I know they're very prominent for making their statues, especially for their Sonic the Hedgehog and Legend of Zelda line. Gaming Heads most recently came out with um, a couple of Skyrim statues. They also have a Team Fortress line, Half-Life 2 line of statues. Uh, I have not bought anything from Gaming Heads before, so I'm excited to see what their quality is like. I'm hoping it's just as good as first four figures, if not maybe exceeding it. So what do you say we get to the unboxing, but first let's just take a look at the box itself. Uh, packaging, very colorful. It's actually very similar to first four figures packaging style, which is fine because I love the way that they package their statues with some nice large thumbnails of what to expect on the inside. And I have number 133. This is limited to uh, 750 pieces worldwide. There's also a limited edition version, which is exclusive to Gaming Heads, which has 350 pieces um, made. However, I kind of prefer the original version only because the exclusive sort of has like this chrome look to it, the coloring. Um, some people might like it better than this one, but I prefer the original coloring on it. So what do you say? I'm just going to save some time here. I'm going to skip ahead to uh, getting this thing out of the box, see what we got inside. Alright, so it's open now, and I have to say I just noticed something on this statue that I had no idea that they would be doing it this way. Uh, and that is something on the base. I think this is really, really freaking cool. So let me show you guys. First, we shall take out the base. Whoa, almost lost the statue there. Um, this is so cool. I thought it was going to be sort of like, you know... Not uh, like just a regular resin uh, statue base, but this is actually fake grass, obviously. But check this out. They use sort of like a fake, almost like what you find at a floral shop, uh, material for like synthetic grass or something. This is like a floor mat kind of grass. That is so cool. I had absolutely no idea that the base would be that way. So surprise number one. Uh, let's take a look at the bottom of the base. So you can see here that I have number 133, and it just says, This Jack and Daxter statue is limited to just 750 pieces worldwide. I love how they just add the just in there. It makes you feel a little more special for owning it. Uh, Naughty Dog and PlayStation logos on the bottom there. And the base itself sort of has a nice chrome finish to it. I have to say, I hope First Four Figures is taking notes. I want to see grass like this on my next Sonic the Hedgehog statue. You listening to me? Because <laughs> this is pretty cool, actually. All right, now for the most exciting part, the statue itself. Very carefully, I'm going to take this out because I can see there are some delicate parts on here. All right. I always get really scared with statues like this because there's always a chance they'll break in the mail. Here he is, the first one, Jack. And I have to say, you know, I'm, I should have said this from the start, but my, my experience with the Jack and Daxter series is that I absolutely love Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy on the PS2, and of course the PS3 HD remake. Jack 2, I liked, but it wasn't, it just lost that charm. There was something about the first game that it sort of lost. Uh, and Jack 3, I never got around to even playing because I never finished Jack 2. I want to do that someday, definitely. But Precursor Legacy is by far one of the greatest games ever created, in my opinion, especially within the platformer genre. I think it's a must-play. So if you have a PS3 or a Vita, actually, I take that back. The Vita version supposedly has a lot of frame rate issues. You must play Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, uh, if you're a fan of platformers. So let me try and figure out what is going on here and where. Oh, I see. Very helpful. They put these two little pegs in the base here, uh, almost like two little wires, if you can see there, and I'm pretty sure that signifies where exactly um, the pegs go in here so that you could actually see, so let's see, yes, okay, so you pull it out, 
But there you go, that's the statue with just Jack himself on there. And now let's take out Daxter. And what made Jack and Daxter so amazing for the time was just the open world. Being able to fully explore this open, seamless world. At the time, there were no load times whatsoever between different areas in the game. And that was just so revolutionary for the time. I'd never played anything like that before. Any platform you can think of at the time, prior to Jack and Daxter, did not offer a seamless open world like that. So it was something really special. Alright, so let's see. Daxter should be going right up here on his shoulder. So let me just make sure I get the peg in there, right? All right, I finally got it in there, but just a warning to any of you who are getting this statue or might get one in the future, just know, be very careful inserting Daxter into the shoulder. It was a little bit, you had to use a little bit of force in there. So I have to say, this statue is freaking amazing. Um, Quality-wise, I mean, the paint job on this thing, it's pretty impeccable. Like, it's, it's to the T what he looks like in the game. Uh, there's textures on the leather, so it's not just like a flat surface for the leather. It's got texturing on there to make it look like a leather material. Um, even the texturing on the footbands down here is different than, say, the leather on his coat or his shirt or whatever you want to say, or his belt. Um, Daxter himself has texturing, so you can kind of make out different fur textures on Daxter himself. The eyes themselves are glossy, especially on Daxter. It's very noticeable compared to uh, everything else. The lines, the painting lines, from what I'm looking at here, uh, are very, very, like, they're very accurate. I know sometimes on the first four figure statues, uh, and I own many of them, especially from the Sonic line, uh, sometimes the paint seams and lines can sort of bleed over into other parts of the statue, and I can tell you one thing, that this statue in particular is really, really accurate. There's not, it's painted very well. Um, well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this look at Gaming Head's Jack and Daxter statue, hopefully the first of many, but I'm not sure if I'll buy any more since I am just a really big fan of the first game, but I have to say Gaming Head's has really impressed me like I'm just noticing little details right now like in the hands you can see there's details on the fingernails and like the wrinkles in that the fingers and there's little dents in his sort of like arm bracer here um, to show like battle like almost like battle scars on his bracer it's some pretty good stuff anyway guys I just can't get over the grass too <laughs> anyway guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video of gaming heads Jack and Daxter uh, statue